Good morning YouTube, this is a follow-up video to the diverticulitis, hospitalised by diverticulitis video where you see me walking around the halls of the hospital moaning about the pain in my tummy. In this video we will talk about getting better, healing. Uh, so if you're um, experiencing diverticulitis and you're watching this video, there is hope you can heal, you can get out of the woods and return to a place in your um, life where you can eat the things that are trigger foods. So follow along. I've got a lot to talk about. Um, what else? Uh, the real reason that fiber is important. Very important. Very important. Uh, probiotics, prebiotics. If you have not got probiotics or prebiotics in your diet and you're experiencing gut health issues, go and buy some and come back and watch the rest of this video. That's how important it is. Uh, what my diet was like back when I was having issues. Uh, this is a response to somebody asking questions today. So I've uh, obviously they're in the same trouble that I was in. So this is a response to help them and anyone else who uh, is watching this. It's not just about diverticulitis. Gut health is so important that we're discovering that even... Um, even kids with autism, when treated with probiotics and prebiotics, have had such an increase in cognitive functioning that um, the two are just linked. If you don't start thinking about your bowel as the roots of your tree, then you stop watching, go away, because <laughs> that's how you need to think about it. The roots of your tree that feed your body, your nutrition all comes from the roots of your tree. Your little villi in your small intestine extract the nutrients. Your large intestine extracts most of the moisture and nutrients. It gets nutrients to feed its walls. That's why we have diverticulitis because the nutrition isn't there. The bacteria are missing. Uh, yeah, okay. Bacteria. Bacteria are ah, so important. Fibre. Fibre is so important. Uh, we're not talking metamucil in a jar. We're talking long fibres that go in here and are still a fibre when they come out the other end. If you don't have that fibre going through, you're not providing the life support raft for the bacteria. The last three feet of our modern bowels are like a desert. They should be like an old growth forest. So if you're thinking of an old growth forest, it's full of plants. There's a myriad, thousands of different trees connecting. That's what you, your bowel should be like. Thousands of different bacteria all working together synergistically. Syn that word. Um, so what these things do is they extract the nutrition from your food and feed the walls of your stomach or your, your bowel, that, that's what keeps the structural integrity of the pipe. If you take away the nutrition, the wall gets weak, there's no vitamin E, there's no B6, there's no magnesium, there's nothing there to hold the walls together and they get weak and they blow out like a like a like an old radiator hose on a car and there's bubble on the wall, food comes through and it gets stuck in the bubble and rather than be in the flow, it, it gets stuck in the bubble and it rots in there and you get a, a pus and the pus forms on the inside of your abdominal cavity leading to mental fog. The mental fog makes it hard to think and then you're just on a downhill slope from there. Uh, that's how important fibre is. Probiotic. A probiotic is a thing that is alive and it's ready to do uh, good work or, or it could be the, you know, the, the spore of a bacteria that is good for you. Um, and then it turns into the bacteria and grows in your tummy. So that's what um, that's what a probiotic is. A prebiotic is something that will feed probiotics or turn into a probiotic further down the line. Prebiotics are just as important. Um, and they can be anything from, uh, you know, uh, eating something like... Uh, Oh, come on, brain, cabbage, corn, anything that's going to break down and feed the probiotic um, bacteria. So what did my what did my diet look like? I'd get up in the morning and I'd start with this. 
and I wouldn't have anything else until lunchtime. Coffee, water, then lunch. That was my day. And lunch would be a food court meal with rice and meat. Um, and then I'd go home and I'd have a big feed of dinner. And that would also be, you know, staple food, rice, pasta and meat. Mostly meat. The dishes were mostly meat. And so getting better, we reduced the amount of meat. And in the end, we said the meat is an issue because it was making me feel bad every time I'd eat the meat. So we dropped the meat and we went vegetarian for a little while. And that was the best thing we could ever do because we lost weight without trying. That's incredible. No exercise. You don't need to exercise if you're on a vegetarian diet. Have you ever seen a fat vegetarian? No. So we're back to eating meat now because my bowel has he uh, healed. Um, I don't have um, the trigger irritations from foods like tomato. Um, tomato. If I ate tomato sauce when I was having issues, uh, straight away right uh, down about here, there would be a, a warm, hot feeling the next day and that would increase. The heat would increase until it would, probably three days later, it would start to turn into pain. And then that would be the beginning of a diverticulitis attack. And I learnt very quickly that if I poured kombucha on it, instead of going to the doctor and getting the two-week course of antibiotics, I'd be out of the woods and starting to heal in two days. Um, this one has turmeric. Turmeric is a great um, putter-outer of fires, should I say. Um, there's a much more technical word for that, but let's just say put out the fire, um, turmeric. So prebiotics, probiotics, this stuff's full of it, and you can literally feel it putting out the fire as it goes down past what I call the pain station. If, you've, if you're having diverticulitis, when something moves through the station, you're in a lot of pain. It's been compared to... Um, childbirth, don't know, never had a kid, seen one come out, I'd say the pain was on the same level. I've actually seen two kids come out. Anyway, I digress. So now, every day, without fail, I always have breakfast. I never, ever skip breakfast, every day. And I do that before I have my coffee, um, because I've found that if I have coffee first, I, I dry out, and when I dry out, I get constipation, and then the constipation leads to irritation, and the irritation leads to um, it, it triggering the trouble. Uh, I'll also talk up Russell Mariani's ebook. I came across him Googling about bowel health. Uh, he's a guru in the US, um, knows a lot about bowel health, has helped a lot of people heal, so you can heal. Stay with that thought. You can heal. You can get out of the woods and be well again. Uh, so check out Russell Mariani's ebook. Uh, it was 20 bucks to download and it was well worth it. He did talk a lot about um, getting you to commit before you actually got into the core of the information. Um, and that was a little bit annoying for me, but I just kept skipping until I got into the information. Uh, so let's... Um, Let's talk a little bit about Russell Mariani's approach. Here's the leftovers of my breakfast. As you can see, I've eaten um, I've eaten cabbage this morning, and there is the life support raft for the bacteria that will make it through the last three feet of my large intestine. Now, here's something else that Russell Mariani recommends: is getting some sort of algae, some really instant nutrition, back into your bowel so that you you can heal. Here's another one, water with salt in it. Read the water cure. There's another one of Russell Mariani's approaches. You need to hydrate. We live in a world where we're far too dehydrated. So for me in Australia, I found it, um, it, it was almost impossible for me to source the actual inputs that Russell Mariani suggested to use, but uh, piece by piece, I put it together using things that I could find in Australian health food stores and such. 
and it made a massive difference, I can really tell you that. Miso, here's another thing. This stuff here uh, creates the lubrication that um, helps everything move through the in, uh, gastrointestinal tract. Makes mucus. Miso helps get it in you. Avoid your trigger foods. Trigger foods are going to be things like uh, anything in the nightshade family. Potato, tomato, tomarillo, capsicum, chili, eggplant. While you're in the irritation phase, while things are hurting, like if you eat tomato sauce and that hurts, you need to take out all of those trigger foods until your body heals. Because once your body's healed, you can put them back in. True. I can have tomato sauce again. I can have chili sauce again. I can eat capsicum again. There's also something to suggest with the diverticulitis that um, uh, small seeds are an irritation source. It's been disproven. Um, so, yeah, backing up the fibre thing, you need like little scouring pads to move through your gastro gastrointestinal tract. That's hard to say. Uh, something else I do regularly, all the time, is I actually get my hand in there and I poke deep down, push right down in there and feel around right down into where the trouble was so that anything that could be sitting in that fold gets pushed back into the flow. I'm about to run out of uh, storage data. I think I've covered everything I wanted to mention. Questions, go for it. I'll answer anything. Um, but yeah, super important. Prebiotics, probiotics, drop the meat and get well. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, share, all that stuff.